It has been a very intriguing year for movies, with some big films receiving a lot of attention, smaller ones searching for audiences and lingering questions about the future of the theater experience. Jeffrey Brown looks at the year in film for our arts and culture series, Canvas. So our audience is returning to theaters, and if so, what are they seeing? And what should they, we, see? I'm joined by two film critics, Ann Hornaday of the Washington Post and Justin Chang of the Los Angeles Times. It's nice to see both of you. Justin, I'll start with you. Why don't you give us two or three of your favorites of the last year? One of my favorite movies this year is Tar, which is Todd Field's uh, brilliant uh, study of a fictional world-renowned classical conductor played by Kate Blanchett in one of the great performances of her career. Time is the thing. Uh -huh. Time is, is the essential piece of uh, interpretation. Even though some have mistaken this for a biopic, um, and it's not, it's, she's a completely fictional creation, the character of Lydia Tarr, her world is just so fully realized that it feels, it, it feels more real than some actual biopics. Um, it's, it's just a brilliant, mesmerizing film. And another of my favorites is uh, a very different movie called After Sun a first feature by a director named Charlotte Wells. Think you'll ever move back to Scotland? No. Why? And there's this feeling, once you leave where you're from, that you don't totally belong there again. It's a semi-autobiographical drama, loosely based on an incident that happened with her and her father when they went on vacation when she was just a pre-adolescent. And it falls in line with quite a few semi-autobiographical films this year, like Steven Spielberg's The Fablemans, James Gray's Armageddon Time. I mean, we're seeing something where filmmakers are tapping into their personal memories. And this one, though, from a previously unknown filmmaker is just so piercing and haunting. It's one of the most moving studies of a father-daughter relationship that I think I've seen in recent memory. Ann Hornaday? Listen, I'll tell you something. My number one movie of the year was Top Gun Maverick. Top Gun Maverick. You bet. Okay. That was Why? the movie I, that I had the most fun. I went in with lots of skepticism. Mm -hmm. I thought it was too late. I thought it had taken too long. I wasn't really necessarily a huge fan of the first one. Many, many years after the many first one. Many years right? after the yeah. fact. Yeah. Can Tom Cruise age gracefully in this yeah. role? And I was utterly disarmed almost immediately, those elbows that had been sharply out collapsed. And it was just so much fun to see it, and the audience was having such a good time. And well, there's something to be said for that. There's a days, lot to be right? said for yeah. that. Yeah. So um, so I cannot tell a lie. That is number one. One that I was a huge fan of, and I wish had been in theaters, that I so I could have sent people to it, was Good Luck to You, Leo Grand. I'm Leo. You must be Nancy. May I come inside? Yes. A little chamber piece starring Emma Thompson and a newcomer named Daryl McCormick. Mm -hmm. And it's about a middle-aged widow who wants to sort of reignite her sex life. And she hires a sex worker, played by Mr. McCormick, to help her do that. And it's a series of two-hander scenes in a hotel room, which you would think would be deadly dull and completely uncinematic. But it is an absolutely charming film. Emma Thompson is at her best, and Daryl McCormick absolutely holds his own with her, and I was quite taken with it. Justin, a lot of people are coming to the movies for some of these big ones. I want to ask you about one of the year-ender big ones that a lot of people have been anticipating. That's Avatar, right? The new Avatar. I really enjoyed the first Avatar, and I was completely transported by this one, too. It is very immersive. The world building is extraordinary. You feel like you are swimming. There were times when I wanted it to just be a great underwater hangout movie. You know, no action. <laughs> you know, the action is great when it kicks in, and you 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 come you go home happy with a lot of with the action. But it's sort of this great bliss out, trippy, Jacques Cousteau documentary on mushrooms experience that I totally <laughs> do recommend. Um, is it a perfect movie? No, but and. I, I, but to your question, Jeff, I think that um, it's encouraging at a time when movies have been so challenged by the COVID pandemic. Um, yes, people have gone back to movies, but it's been a really tough year at the box office, especially for movies like Tar. And Tar has made more money than some. I mean, the movies that Anne and I write about week in, week out, smaller movies, they last a few weeks in theaters and then it feels like they're gone or they're on a streaming platform. I've never worried more than ever for the health of, huh. you know, the mid-budget adult dramas, right. the, the, the American independent films, um, international films, 
What do you think about this, Ann uh, Hornaday? I share Justin's yeah. concern, and I think most of us have been concerned about that, especially that mid-budget um, mm -hmm. adult drama. That has always been an endangered species, and now I feel like these short theatrical releases are almost um, ads for the stream. You know, they're, mm -hmm. they're building awareness for audiences that have now become conditioned to stay at home. There has been an exception to this recently, which is the whale. Do you forget the feeling? People are incapable of not caring. It's a theatrical adaptation starring Brendan Fraser mm -hmm. that just broke box office records. People it tells us crazy. that it's the movie. Audiences will come out to see something, whether that's a huge big screen blockbuster spectacle mm -hmm. or, you know, a smaller scale, smaller canvas thing, but it's going to be that content. Let me just ask you both one more question quickly, just to take us out on a kind of up note here about a performance that you love. Anne, you want to start that? Well, you know, I will mention a movie that I think deserved a bigger theatrical audience, and that's She Said, um, mm -hmm. which is about the New York Times reporters who broke the Harvey Weinstein mm -hmm. story. It is a really terrific journalistic procedural, you know, in that great tradition of all the president's men in spotlight. But there's a performance at the center of this movie by Samantha Morton. He played people. He was a master manipulator. It's a supporting performance. It's not one of the leads. She's one of the women who was affected and traumatized by her interactions with Harvey Weinstein, and her scene changes the film. It's a, it's a fulcrum moment. This is bigger than Weinstein. This is about the system protecting abusers. And she dominates and commands it in a way that is just, it's just devastating. And Justin Chang, one performance. I'm going to call some attention, not that she necessarily needs it, to Michelle Yeoh in Everything Everywhere All at Once. It does not look good. Michelle Yeoh gives a wonderful performance in it. What's happening? The movie is very much a love letter to her, to her career. Her standing as one of our great martial arts performers, one of Asia's great action stars. Wow, that really good. But also just as a fabulous actor, something that has not been recognized as much as it should be. And I can't think of another <laughs> movie this year, save maybe Tar and Kate Blanchett, that just calls on an actor to do so many things and to make you believe her doing all of them. And so mm -hmm. those two performances, I think, are maybe on a different level this year from most everything else. All right, Justin Chang of the Los Angeles Times and Horner Day of the Washington Post, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank I you hope so you. much. And I hope you were taking notes. There's a lot to watch there. And on the NewsHour Online, watch trailers from the movies our critics mentioned. That is at pbs.org slash NewsHour.